Hey everyone, Bypass Blake here. Today's video is going to be all about the gastric bypass surgery. I will explain how it works, how much weight you can expect to lose from it, and what time frame, and also discuss the recovery time from surgery. You don't want to miss this, so stick around. Is gastric bypass, also called the RUNY gastric bypass or RNY gastric bypass. It has been around for decades and it has been dubbed the gold standard for weight loss surgery by the American Society for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery and also the National Institutes of Health. Like the gastric sleeve, it is also typically performed laparoscopically with five or six small incisions in the abdomen. Unlike the gastric sleeve surgery though, the bypass surgery is more complex. The sleeve has just one step, removing 80% of the stomach. The bypass has two steps. First, the surgeon makes a smaller new stomach called a pouch by using and stapling a small part of the upper stomach together. It's about one ounce or the size of a golf ball. The rest of the stomach stays intact and stays in your body, so it can produce stomach bile to aid in digestion for the intestines. It's important to note that this makes stomach bile change from an unhealthy fatty pattern to a leaner, lower weight pattern that helps in losing weight, which is the same metabolic changes that the gastric sleeve surgery has. The second part of the surgery, the surgeon removes a section of the small intestines called the jejunum, and it is then attached to the new small stomach pouch so food will bypass your old stomach and bypass part of the intestines connected to your old stomach called the duodenum. This is important to pass the duodenum because it has sensory hormones that increase hunger and are responsible for fat storage and insulin sensitivity, which all that means is part of this intestine is also responsible for weight gain. And this surgery bypasses that, so none of that weight gain gets triggered whenever you eat. The importance of bypassing the part of your small intestines is so that food, which is calories, doesn't have time to get absorbed. That is called malabsorption. It's the amount of food you eat is significantly reduced due to the size of your new stomach, which is about one ounce or the size of a golf ball. So vitamins need to be supplemented and are supplemented daily by taking a multivitamin and about two or three calcium pills or chews throughout the day which is very similar, if not identical, to the gastric sleeve requirements for a lot of programs. So the new small pouch makes the surgery restrictive, meaning you reduce the amount of food that you can eat, but it also has malabsorption, meaning what you eat from calories aren't fully absorbed, and that'll also help you lose weight. There are also the hormonal and metabolic changes mentioned before during the gastric sleeve that help you lose weight as well. The gastric bypass pouch holds one ounce of food or size of a golf ball, which is significantly smaller than three ounces of the gastric sleeve stomach for comparison. Gastric bypass is typically better for people who have acid reflux, which is heartburn, diabetes, or want to lose more weight than the gastric band or sleeve. It also typically offers a higher percentage of overall long-term weight loss when compared to the gastric band in the gastric sleeve surgery but less weight loss from the duodenal switch. Although the switch is a lot more high risk, which we'll talk about later. Gastric bypass is surgically reversible. However, it is rarely performed and there must be an emergency situation for that to happen, such as severe complications, which is extremely, extremely rare. The surgery itself for gastric bypass takes about one to two hours under general anesthesia the weight loss is estimated to be 70% to 80% of their excess body weight and is mostly lost within the first 12 to 18 months. As far as recovery, it is surgeon specific, but typically people are usually staying about one or two nights at the hospital and typically you can go back to work 10 days to two weeks after surgery, assuming you won't be doing any heavy lifting. Typically you'll have lifting restrictions, more than 20 to 30 pounds, or doing push-pull motions such as vacuuming or avoided during the first four to six weeks of surgery. Heavy lifting or pushing heavy loads should be restricted for three months after surgery. After surgery, typically week one and two would be a liquid-only diet 
After the next three weeks, she will progress to pureed foods and then soft food. And then after about two months post-surgery, you'll be able to eat regular food. It is also important to note that the gastric bypass has a side effect called dumping syndrome or rapid gastric emptying. That is actually a reason why a lot of people choose the surgery and it doesn't happen in other surgeries. People that get the gastric bypass use the dumping syndrome as a deterrent to keep them from eating certain foods, such as really sugary sweets or drinks that made them overweight in the first place. The dumping syndrome typically occurs when you overeat something very high in sugar, like candy or ice cream. Just a small bite or two of something really sweet typically doesn't trigger dumping syndrome. It's when you overindulge. What happens in dumping syndrome is the food moves way too fast from your pouch into your intestines, which is the dumping. The dumping syndrome happens in two phases. The first phase is within the first 10 to 30 minutes, and the second is within two to three hours. Symptoms vary person to person, but for both phases can include some nausea, abdominal cramping, fatigue, dizziness, weakness, rapid heartbeat, and sometimes diarrhea. Now, about 85% of people after gastric bypass can experience early dumping at some point, but only 25% or one in four people will ever experience late dumping. Keep in mind, you can avoid dumping syndrome by not eating certain types of very high sugary foods. Triggering dumping syndrome and the intensity of the side effects usually start to lessen, sometimes within the first few months. Dumping syndrome sounds scary, but do not let that deter you from getting gastric bypass. I hope you learned something from this video and will be more informed about the surgery so you can discuss it with your doctor or surgeon to make a better decision on which weight loss surgery is right for you. Check out my other videos to learn more about the other surgeries and also for advice, tips, and tricks for your weight loss surgery journey. If you found this video helpful, smash that like button, subscribe, share, comment, and as always, thanks for watching.